The Energy Frontier Research Center is a multidisciplinary, multi-investigator uh, program uh, sponsored by the U.S. Department of Energy. And these programs are designed to bring people who have different skills together so that they can work on some of society's more complicated problems. In our case, the problem we're seeking to address is how do you capture carbon dioxide from the exhaust stream of a power plant. If you look in uh, the energy requirements for gas separation, yet currently uh, it's about 10 to 20 percent of all energy goes into gas separations. And what we're trying to do in UC Berkeley is come up with new materials to reduce the energy cost of these type of gas separations. So one of the exciting things about this EFRC is that it brings together the traditional discipline of chemical engineering and what we would call separation science and brings it to bear in a new way uh, in this issue of carbon capture. We're really about discovering new materials um, that might efficiently remove carbon dioxide from the emissions of a power plant flue gas um, and do that in a way that, that it doesn't cost a lot of energy and take away a lot of steam that's used to make electricity in the power plant. And so we need a material that can absorb only the carbon dioxide and let oxygen, nitrogen, and water go off into the atmosphere. MOFs are metal organic frameworks and they are composed, as the name indicates, from uh, a combination of organic units and inorganic units. And these are stitched together to make large structures and large frameworks. They encompass within them large spaces. And these spaces can be used to separate organic compounds and the spaces also could be used uh, to, uh, to store gases like hydrogen, uh, methane and natural gas, and to capture carbon dioxide from the atmosphere or from uh, potentially flue gas coming out of power plants or even the exhausts of automobiles. The power of MOF chemistry is that one can uh, vary the components, the inorganic components and the organic components, but also we can go in and pin down a specific uh, molecular units that are to target certain applications. The normal way in which we synthesize MOFs is to combine a metal salt and an organic ligand using a high boiling solvent and as we slowly heat these reagents together they'll actually fall out of solution and what we'll get is a nice porous structure that doesn't collapse when we pull a vacuum on it. You know, our goal is to really synthesize robust metal organic frameworks that are made from cheap reliable materials one of the materials that we've made that's most promising is composed of magnesium atoms and also contains with the means within the pores that are actually very good at absorbing carbon dioxide, including directly out of air. It's been the dream of chemists to be able to design materials or to be able to build materials by design. And the MOF chemistry has really shown us how this can be done in an exquisite way. Essentially, we've taken two areas of chemistry, combine them together, organic and inorganic, to make a whole new area of chemistry. So it is, it is judging by the number of groups around the world that are doing MOF chemistry, it is, uh, it's very exciting and it is a breakthrough. With the chemistry that uh, we have developed here in Berkeley in the group of Professor Long and Professor uh, Yangi, um, we can make millions of possible material. And how can we make sure that we synthesize exactly the optimum material? One of the things we are able to, to do with NMR spectroscopy is look at these powdered materials and look at the uh, spatial proximity of individual atoms in these materials. And by measuring their distances and combining that with computer simulation, we were able to uh, partition or understand how various parts of these frames were put together. Most elements have um, isotopes that with magnetic moment, and this is called nuclear spins, like uh, protons, carbon-13, and N15. And uh, NMR spectroscopy is an uh, analytical tool, analytical technique to uh, study the behavior of the nuclear spins and in order to get the information about molecular structure and the dynamics. So the NMR is very sensitive to the changes in the local chemical environment. For example, the nuclear spins at the absorption site can be strongly affected by the introduction and the motion of gas molecules. 
and we can focus the NMR signal on both the host structure and the gas molecules and get a holistic picture of the system. And in addition, the NMR system is amenable to variable uh, temperatures and the pressures. So we can get in situ experiments uh, at the, under the realistic operating conditions. What we have done now is we have identified how to systematically synthesize a material with exactly the right properties for a separation of a model fluid gas. We regard at the EFRC the capture of CO2 as an essential problem towards dealing with climate change and global warming. And the capture of CO2 is an essential part of that, and that's really what motivates our work.